test these nuts. These nuts. There's so much happening. Oh boy. Oh boy. You know the feeling when you're about to uh, cease and uh, everything you do just adds to that? Your boy's sick. Your boy's a little bit sick. So if I sound a little bit like a, a little bit hoarse, well, don't blame me. Just blame uh, one of those electronic music festivals all the young kids go to to make them feel young and uh, try to get with the youth culture. Because unfortunately, it turns out that they're just a cesspool of bacteria and growth and feces and semen. If there was only some sort of online platform where I could learn how to diagnose and possibly treat some of my, <laughs> some of my symptoms. Oh, Skillshare is an online platform where you could learn anything and everything when it comes to trying to better yourself as an individual. You wanna learn about sound design? They got it on Skillshare. And luckily for me, they happen to be sponsoring this video. That's right, Skillshare sponsoring this video. I'm legit. I'm a person that's being sponsored by an actual legitimate company. And I want to say uh, that Skillshare is something that will benefit you as well. How will it benefit you? There are literally thousands of courses. What? Thousands, not dozens, not tens, thousands of courses going over pretty much anything you want. As I mentioned earlier, sound design is one that I need desperately. Video production, you wanna learn about video production, you wanna learn how you could be a competitor to your boy here on YouTube, it's not that hard. Skillshare's got your back. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to any course you want. So usually you sign up to one of these programs and they say, hey, guess what? You're limited to only three. You can only deal with a couple of them. Well, not Skillshare. Skillshare says, hey, guess what? We got your back. Unlimited access, literally unlimited. You could look at one course, you could shut up, you could look at another course. It doesn't matter, all right? And it's cheap. It's less than 10 bucks a month. What? What? And here's the thing, if you sign up using that special link that you're gonna find in the uh, description of this video, you're gonna get two months for free. So if you don't want it, just return it. If you don't want it, you could return it, okay? It's not gonna be like a Blockbuster where you rent the Matrix and then you try to return the Matrix and it turns out that Blockbuster has closed. It's not gonna be like that, all right? As a matter of fact, not a lot of things are gonna be like that. So just check it out, test it out. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. You guys are the real MVP. So as I mentioned earlier, your boy's a little sick. Your boy's a little bit uh, sick and not just sick of magic, all right? I made a couple of videos in regards to uh, magic and the uh, problem with magic and how magic could be mathematically proven to be terrible, which, by the way, you should check out. If we subtract 5 from 916, but uh, your boy's sick in the sense of um, my insides are... Uh, uh, these nuts on fire. My insides are uh, feeling like I want to just punch a small baby just to try to make myself feel better. But today we're going to learn a little bit of a peak technique. Now this is something that I've covered before on the academy. However, your boy has uh, some new refreshing takes on this and uh, just provide some context because here's the thing. A magician shows you something. He shows you how to do it, but he doesn't tell you why to do it. He doesn't tell you potential reasons as to how this could be used. He just says, hey, do it. All right. And then you click on it and then you say, hey, this is great, but not better. It could be better because I'm never satisfied because I'm a magician. And even if you're putting up tutorials on YouTube, guess what? I'm not going to be satisfied. I want more. So today I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you reasons as to why this could be uh, used in uh, potential ideas. So not just a peek. I'm going to show you guys other ways that you could use this to uh, get inside the minds of the spectator and make them think that you're actually something better than you actually are. This doesn't follow me anymore. Before it would follow me, now it doesn't follow me. I don't like, I don't like that it does that. Before it would follow me and then now there's no dynamic movement. So what am I supposed to do? I'm just walking around here like an idiot. Like I'm trying to plot something. Also have a deck coming out. Right now we're at the prototype stage. Uh, I don't know how much I could show of the deck, but uh, let's, let's see right here. Um, I'll show you the side of it. So right now this is the prototype deck, which by the way, people are uh, pretty much horrendous because I teased it on Instagram and I had to overtly tease it and say, hey, wow, I wonder what's in my hand. In one of the last videos, I mentioned, oh, wow, hey, Bin Wang playing cards. Crazy, right? Always leaves one in the box. Gee, I wonder what this one is. And nobody, nobody even thought that that could be uh, my own deck. But uh, here it is. Here's the deck. Uh, am I going to show it? Am I gonna, am I gonna show it? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna show it because 
Honestly, you don't deserve it. Uh, but we're at the prototype stage right now. We're making a little bit of adjustments. We're making some improvements. And that's your boy. We got four decks in the pipeline, by the way. So don't think that we're a one deck trick pony. No, we got four decks in the pipeline because that's the way we do things. Okay. So this is just going to be the first deck of many. TMP. Those are the initials to this deck. TMP. I'll give you the first word. It's the. It's the. Could you have figured that out with your feeble magician brain? I think not. Hey, are those Bin Wang cards? Are those Bin Wang playing cards? Hey man, are you holding some Bin Wangs? Dude, are those Bin Wang playing cards? Because I love Bin Wang playing cards. Bin Wangs are my favorite playing cards. Hey man, dude, I hope if you show me a card trick, it's gonna be using Bin Wang playing cards. Well, you're in luck. You're in luck because I'm gonna use uh, Bin Wang playing cards. No extra cards. So uh, this is a fun little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have the uh, spectators shuffle the deck as best they can. Usually spectators shuffle a deck like this. Uh, uh. Again, I would rather you uh, pick competent spectators for this, but if you're only performing for uh, idiots, you gotta make do with what you have. Uh, so the spectator is gonna call stop as you uh, do one of these actions. You're gonna do this and the spectator is gonna call stop wherever it is they want. So let's say they call stop uh, over here. Could you remember that card? Could I check it out in the monitor? Let's say it's the queen of diamonds, right? Tell the spectator to remember remember that card. Remember that card. Uh, they could have called stop anywhere here. They could have called stop anywhere here. As a matter of fact, sir, I want you to take the deck and I want you to shuffle it as best you can. And the spectator takes the deck and they mix it up again. Uh, uh. And at this point, uh, you tell the spectator to hold the deck in their hands and to just uh, imagine their card. Imagine their card as best they can. And of course, guess what you do as a magician? You say... Queen of Diamonds. So a peak in magic, for those of you guys that don't know, for those of you guys that are just uh, left under the rock, a peak is when you secretly ascertain information that you're not supposed to know. So for example, maybe you do a little bit of a, of a center tear where you uh, have the spectator write down the name of someone that's relevant to them on a piece of paper and you peek at the paper while you're tearing it up. That's a peak. Uh, here, same thing. What we're doing is we're peeking at the spectator's card. So the spectator picks a card, they think it's fair. Little do they know that you're taking a peek at it because you're sneaky, a sneaky magician who doesn't shower and whose parents don't like you, okay? So here, uh, what we're doing is we're taking a peek at the spectator's card. And the peek, I think, has a lot of merit to it. This is something that I've uh, talked about briefly before in uh, these peak compilation videos i didn't know that, that could be a thing but uh i've taught this before and then uh also in the academy i've taught this on the academy so this is a peak that i enjoy thoroughly there's a peak that i enjoy thoroughly that i haven't seen done so this is how we do things uh, we're gonna hold the deck in the left hand in the left hand now usually uh to establish a connection with the audience what you do is that you look at the uh, sensor and not the screen so the screen is right here right but if you've noticed cleverly because i'm aware of uh stage uh, dynamics, I've been looking at the sensor and not the monitor. Uh, this is how you could tell that a YouTuber is disconnected with his audience when they're looking at the monitor and not the uh, the actual lens or the actual sensor of the camera. Uh, for now though, I'm going to need to look at the uh, monitor because I need to know what I'm, what you guys are seeing. So if you feel disconnected, it's because I am disconnected from you because I'm better than you. So just keep that in mind if um. If you feel like I'm not a, getting empathy or sympathy with you by looking at you in your stupid eyes. Uh, so here, what you're going to do, you're going to hold the deck in your left hand just like this. You see that? And uh, you're going to come in with your right hand and you're going to riffle back on the upper right corner of the deck. So you're going to riffle down with the upper right corner of the deck. This is the uh, classic peak position here where you tell the spectator to call stop and they're going to call stop wherever it is they want. Some magicians say that a bevel helps. So you notice that the uh, cards are slightly beveled. That helps somewhat, but depends on uh, your own hands and your hand size. But for this, we're just going to have the spectator call stop as we run and they're going to see a bunch of cards running through. So in this case, they call stop over here. Now, wherever it is they call stop, you're going to do a uh, little bit of a move here where you're going to press up with your pinky. By pressing up with your pinky, you notice that you're going to be able to establish what's known as a pinky 
break, a pinky break, is just a separation between two halves of a deck that indicate the position of an important card. So in this case, the important card is going to be below. So we're going to have a pinky break below the important card. If you notice, this is the important card, our pinky, the little flesh of our pinky. We're not shoving the whole pinky in there like I've seen other magicians do. And they go, hey, is my break technique good? No, your break technique is retarded. It's in the DSM, I think four, because they updated DSM five to not have uh, the word retarded in it. But yours is so bad that we had to regress to a previous version of the book just to call you retarded. So here we go. Uh, you're getting a pinky break right there by just inserting the flesh of your pinky between both halves. Uh, you want to also press down with your thumb. You see that you're pressing down with your thumb to ensure that that break is not seen from the front. The only place you can see the break is back here, but guess what? We're gonna keep that to our dirty, dirty, disgusting selves. So that's the first step of this break, or uh, this glimpse, this peak, whatever you wanna call it. The next step is very, very simple. We're gonna spread above the break. So in this case, we're spreading cards above the break and we're gonna show it to a spectator like this. As we say, you could have stopped on any one of these cards. These are all possibilities that you had. Now we're gonna spread to the break and we're actually gonna make contact with our left middle finger on the face of the card that we have a break on. So in this case, the special card is gonna be the Jack of Hearts. We're gonna spread through and tell the spectator, hey, you could have stopped on any one of these cards. We're gonna spread through and make sure that there's a little bit of a spread. You notice that I have a couple cards above the spectator's card. So here's the spectator's card and the Jack of Hearts. There's a couple cards spread to mask that card because uh, this looks camouflaged this looks obvious that you're holding a spectator's card and you don't want them to think that you have any idea as to what their card is or where the card is so this is just done as i'm spreading through and saying uh, you could have stopped on any one of these cards as a matter of fact all these cards are different and that's the move you see that all these cards are different so as i turn these cards over I'm just looking at the card that my middle finger is touching. So I'm looking at the card that my middle finger is touching. As I say, all these cards are different. I could square this up, hand this to the spectator, and guess what? I know their card. They don't know that I know their card, but I know their card. So it's a very, very simple action to do. It's nothing too difficult. They call stop anywhere they want. Let's say they call stop over here. We're going to get a pinky break right here. Uh, you could have called stop on any one of these cards. As a matter of fact, they're all different. So one more time here, spectator call stop. Let's say they call stop over here on this uh, advert card. You're gonna get a pinky break. You're gonna spread through and say you could have called stop anywhere here. As a matter of fact, all these cards are different. Whatever card is coming in contact with my middle finger, that's the card that I know is their card. And that's the peak, that's it, that's the glimpse. And uh, you could hand the deck to the spectator at that point, you could have them mix it up. And uh, from there is a very, very fair procedure. One of my favorite magicians that uh, handles one of these uh, glimpse techniques very, very well is Richard Osterlin. Richard Osterlin is a mentalist, I believe out of Kentucky. He's known for his uh, perfected center tear. He has a bunch of uh, routines. He's one of my inspirations when it comes to growing up in uh, magic and mentalism. And uh, his handling for this and handling for a thought of card is beautiful. He pretty much tells the spectator, you know, would it be impressive if I could, if I could pull that card out of the deck and he builds it up to where the spectator goes, you know what? Yes, all of this would be impressive, but it'd be impossible. And then he goes up to the spectator and says, your card's a five of spades and they lose their minds. You could reveal the card however it is that you want. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, what information do you have? You have the information of a selected playing card that the spectator doesn't know that you have. If we break that down even further, you have a piece of information that the spectator doesn't know that you have. So use that as you would. You could use that to get one ahead there are many techniques that you could use to get one ahead of the uh, spectator. And uh, starting off with the playing card is one way that's great. You have a piece of information. So there are many techniques you could do to reveal that piece of information. You could tell the spectator you want them to remember a certain memory that uh, reminds them of this particular playing card. Remember, it's a number, right? So maybe the number five, if they happen to peek at the number five, the number five is um, the first number in their address of their house as a child. You have them think about this. And at the end of the day, when you reveal the card, guess what the spectator's memory is going to be? Oh man, that's crazy. He told me not only the card that I was thinking of, but also he told me stuff about my childhood that there's no way that I knew. Guess what? You don't have to say anything. The spectator did all the work in their head and all you did was take credit 
and peek at a card. That's it. You could also get the card in a position for any card at any number. So imagine after you uh, have the cards back, you reveal the card to the spectator. There's going to be a nice little bit of a moment where you could pretty much bring an elephant out of your pocket and they're not going to remember because they're stupid and they're also uh, freaking out from the previous effect. So you could just very easily cut the card to the top of the deck, have the spectator hold it, uh, ask him to name any number they want. And guess what? Not only do they know, uh, do you know the card that they picked, but they happen to have intuited the position. Of course, don't just make it a coincidence effect, make it actually meaningful. And, um, but that's another video altogether. But you have many different options that you could do. One of my favorite magicians, Peter Turner, uh, he would pretty much do, um, wonders with just a peek like this he would probably whisper to the spectator and uh, have the spectator react in a uh, crazy manner all by just having a card peeked at so that's some uh, work that you could look into if you want to get further into the uh, mentalism rabbit hole but think about why you're doing this think about what you're getting you're getting a piece of information how could you exploit that to the spectator how could you involve another spectator these are things that uh make you well beyond just a magician who's uh doing peaks to his mom and then having her say oh my god you're the best magician i know of course of course you are because you're the only magician that i know so that's the video that's the peak it's a, one of my favorite peaks it's a simple peak it's something that's not too hard to do i hope you guys liked it thank you guys for being uh, part of this whole youtube thing you guys are watching my videos uh, you guys are hitting that button that says hey I like your video only for the sole purpose of uh, tricking the YouTube uh, hive mind algorithm to make my channel seem better than it actually is. Uh, but thank you guys. I'm going to go figure out different ways to use Benadryl to just end my existence. Keep thinking I'm candy till your fucking skull get popped and your brain jump out the top like Jack in the Box. In the hood, summertime is the killing season. It's hot.